So I'm John McLeod. I'm uh, the account manager with Pressbooks, and uh, it's my pleasure to to uh, demonstrate some of the features for users that are available on the uh, Open Washington uh, network. Um, and uh, specifically, if you have any questions about how you might do some certain things as an author on Pressbooks, I'd be happy to hear from you. Um, as I go through my presentation, I usually uh, spend a little time telling you just generally what is Pressbooks and uh, Pressbooks. Uh, there's three things that I, I will cover. Um, the Pressbooks directory. Um, so I'll show you uh, what's available on the directory and how that uh, can be used to adapt uh, openly available uh, resources. Um, I'll go through Pressbooks Create, uh, which is our authoring and editing platform on your network. <laughs> And I'll spend a little bit of time talking about Pressbooks results, which is an add-on for your network. Uh, but the LTI integration, we're going to get set up so that you can use your Pressbooks uh, titles within your LMS. Uh, I believe you're all on Canvas. So uh, we'll go over that a little bit. Um, so uh, this is Pressbooks.pub. You might have already seen uh, or uh, played with an account on Pressbooks.com or Pressbooks.pub. Uh, Pressbooks.pub is our new platform that basically has uh, a lot of the features that have been uh, embedded within the Open Washington network already. Um, the Pressbooks directory well, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about is um, it came together uh, a couple of years ago when uh, Pressbooks clients like uh, uh, Open Washington uh, came to us and said that what they'd like is uh, a, a space where they could share uh, any of the openly uh, licensed work, any of the great published uh, books that have been done on Pressbooks networks with one another, with uh, other people so that they can be searched, they can be found, they can be remixed and reused and redistributed uh, as people choose. Um, and through that, the Pressbooks directory was born. So I joined Pressbooks about a year ago. And um, at, at that time, um, this was the Pressbooks directory. There, uh, um, there was just over 2,000 books available across 91 different networks. And I'm just going to jump into the directory right now to show you. So right now we're, we're getting close to 5,000 books published uh, across 139 different Pressbooks networks. So a Pressbooks network is set up like the Open Washington network where uh, it can be set up where a number of uh, institutions uh, like the 34 uh, member institutions of Open Washington um, or it can be an individual institution. So uh, University of Washington, for instance, uh, has a Pressbooks instance and uh, they'll, you, they'll publish uh, books across uh, the entire institution. So uh, that 139 different Pressbooks networks, we've uh, calculated that that means about 350 different higher ed education, uh, higher ed institutions are publishing uh, books to the directory. Uh, there is a little self-guided tour, if you like, um, uh, but I'll point out a couple of the things here. Uh, first of all, uh, curated collections. So we have a librarian on staff at Pressbooks uh, who will go through and he will pick some of the best uh, uh, examples of mostly open educational resources uh, in a number of different areas. Um, you can filter uh, in uh, your search on just specific collections. So uh, I'll point out, we have a collection on student-led OER. So if you're doing any open pedagogy projects, uh, here's a great place where you can search uh, some of the existing uh, open educational resource uh, that have been done by using students as authors. Um, so these are all available to look at and go through. Let me just clear that right now. Um, the search function works like you would expect. Um, so I'm just gonna put in a search for sociology and it'll limit this to 90 different books right now. Um, and you can uh, look at uh, within the subjects. So this will filter on some of the metadata. 
um, the specific network. So if you wanted to see what was published, uh, let's say, so here's uh, the two Washington networks that I spoke about, University of Washington Libraries or Open Washington. Um, so if I select those, you can see here uh, that there's two sociology projects that are available uh, for you to select. So let me just clear that off. Um, you can uh, you can do an awful lot uh, with your search. You can see um, the um, actual title cards for each book that comes up. Um, where it's got the, the network that it was published to, the institution, um, Introduction to Sociology is the title, uh, gives the word count. Um, it'll tell you how many uh, H5P activities uh, are available. Uh, if you're not aware, H5P are inter interactive uh, tools that are used within Pressbooks. Uh, they're built on HTML5. And uh, a lot of them are openly licensed. So you can, again, remix and reuse them across a number of different titles. So we put that listing here so that people can see if they are looking for uh, inspiration or if they are looking for activities to, uh, to use in their, their projects, they can borrow from those. Um, and then some more of the metadata uh, for the book. Uh, if you found something that you liked, uh, you just click on the title or on the cover and that'll take you into the book. So one of the things that uh, I like to show people uh, when we're, we're doing this is um, that the uh, Pressbooks directory can be a great source to find material to adapt. So um, I know that across an awful lot of the institutions, you're probably already using uh, one or another OpenStax text on campus. Uh, so you, if you're not aware, OpenStax is an OER publisher. Uh, they do publish print material, but they uh, distribute their texts online. Um, and it's great uh, reviewed OER content. And a lot of Pressbooks networks have uh, ingested OER, or sorry, OER material from OpenStax uh, already into their networks. And this is one of those, you can see here, this OpenStax book was imported into Pressbooks on October 27th, 2021. So uh, just over a year ago. So if I click on that book to have a look, um, I happen to know a little bit about this uh, OpenStax book and I can go down to the table of contents and I can see just from the table of contents that it pretty much follows the same uh, uh, the same structure as the OpenStax text. And uh, it might tell me in the preface, uh, uh, again, about this book. So uh, just looking through this, I know that um, this book was uh, the actual OpenStax text just copied into this uh, Pressbooks network and uh, used with students uh, uh, through the, the Pressbooks uh, interface rather than OpenStax. So the nice part about that is it becomes then a great uh, source for adaptation. So if you like this OpenStax book and you wanted to uh, use it with your students, um, but maybe you weren't going to use all of it, or if you wanted to combine it with a few chapters from something else, uh, I'm just going to go into our uh, Open Washington uh, network. Let me just go to the home site of your network when you get in. Um, so you can uh, use your network to adapt this book and make it your own. Um, so just a little bit about the Open Washington Network. Um, you, can, uh, you can see we have here uh, how you sign up. Uh, there's a link to the user guide. Um, you can find a book uh, and that just takes you to the Pressbooks directory that we are already in. And uh, what uh, Bo Young's been doing here as well is she's uh, created college catalogs so that each institution that is publishing to the network, you can have a look at uh, the, the books that are being uh, published by that institution. So if we go in to see what Lake Washington has been published, you see that the, uh, the covers are available and some information, the title and the author's name on each of these. So it's a nice uh, look and a nice way to uh, show off the work that you've done. Just go back to this uh, site and get in. So once you uh, 
log into the site, this will be the first thing you see. Um, so as an author, when you come in, just give me a second. Like I said, my internet has been kind of patchy. Um, when you log in, um, you'll see this screen, uh, this dashboard, and uh, your first step uh, to using Pressbooks, you're either going to want to create a book or clone a book. So if you're creating a book, that's creating a book from scratch. And I'll just click on that to show you what it uh, looks like. Um, so uh, when you create a book, it, it'll show you books that you are already a member of. Um, so if this is your first time, it'll just show you uh, the actual link for the, uh, the, the homepage. Um, and uh, just so that, that uh, you know, um, each Pressbooks network is built upon WordPress. So when you join the network, you're a member of the network and any of the sites that you create. So uh, a book is a site on WordPress. So uh, this is uh, this, the book that I had created previously. Um, but if you want to create a new one, you create uh, the site name. So you might be selecting demo December 2nd um, and then enter the book title, whatever you want to call the book. And you select uh, if you want to change, um, you can change it here, but uh, you probably default to English uh, United States. And uh, would you like your book to be visible to the public? Yes or no? Most of you, unless you're uh, going to import some material directly, are going to select no um, and, and keep it private until you're ready to release it and click create a book. So I'm not going to do that because it does take a second uh, to create that book. Um, and what I want to show you is the clone a book feature. So uh, you can see you can use this clone a book feature to clone any openly licensed public available book uh, from one Pressbooks directory or one Pressbooks network to another. So most people find those books on the directory, but if there are other books uh, that you know of that maybe not all uh, Pressbooks books have been published to the directory. So you can take the URL of that book. Let me just grab the URL and pop that into the source book area and uh, the target book URL. So what you want to call your book. So again, uh, demo December 2nd. And if you want to change the title of the book, Intro to Sociology works for me, but uh, if you wanted to uh, change the title of the book, you would enter that new title here. Otherwise, if you left it blank, uh, the original title of the book would be used. And then you click clone this book, and then an exact copy of the book will be made from that Pressbooks network over to your Open Washington network. Again, I'm not going to click that because it does take a couple of minutes, um, but I'll, I've already created a copy uh, for Intro to Sociology. And um, I wanted to show you a few things. Uh, so once you've cloned the book, this is what you get. So the entire uh, content of the text is brought over. And you can see that the actual content within the, the book is the same as the previous copy. So uh, the, the actual images are the same. Um, I've started uh, to make some changes to this first chapter here, um, and, and I'll show you right now how to, how to do, go about and do that. So uh, one of the things that uh, I've done to this book is I've started creating a live glossary. So OpenStax is uh, great material. Uh, it's got some great end of chapter quizzes. It also has some great, you know, glossary features. So uh, end of chapter or end of the book uh, glossaries uh, for students to use, but originally intended for a print environment. So with a web book, uh, you can make a live glossary. So you can see these short codes that are available around certain um, words. So it might be sociologist that I want to highlight. Um, I'm going to insert a glossary term. So let's see if I've already got sociologist. Yeah, sociologist is available there. So um, if I've created some glossary terms already, I can just choose from those terms um, or I can create and insert a new term. 
Um, when I do that, it'll insert these short codes around that term. So I'll just go here and I'm just going to bold that. Um, so once I save that, I'll just show you what the effect is on the web book. So let me just click preview and it opens up uh, the web book. And so you see here that these uh, terms now are available. They're, they're bolded and there's links to them. So a student can go and they can use the live glossary online. Okay. So another feature um, that's available within uh, a Pressbooks network is uh, like I talked about is H5P content. So if I was to go back to the directory and I wanna just find uh, sociology material that has at least one H5P activity. So that's gonna limit the search to uh, all the books in sociology that have at least one H5P activity. So uh, this one has 71 H5P activities. So when I click on this link, it'll pull up a listing of all the H5P activities from that book. So I don't have to go through and uh, search through the, the actual book itself uh, to find the H5P activities. They're all available for me here. So I can show the activity. Um, so I'm going to look here and I see that, um, so this is a drag and drop exercise for students. Um, so uh, again, this whole thing is a, a quiz um, so with a couple of drag and drop and short answer. So if uh, this is material, oh, sociological perspective, I know that we cover that. Okay, true, false, multiple choice. Okay, so I don't mind this. Uh, this is one that I think I'd like to use within my book. So I'm gonna just click on the reuse. I'm gonna download this as an H5P file. And then when I go back into my book, uh, gotta find my book. Um, I have access to uh, an H5P hub down in the bottom uh, left-hand corner here. So I'm gonna add a new H5P activity. And I'm just gonna click on upload and select the file. I'm gonna open that and I'm gonna use that. So I'll just give it a sec here while uh, that file is uploaded within H5P. Okay, so that file has been added to my library and I click create. Sorry, let me just go and find that here. Oh, sociological perspective, there it is. Okay, so here's the, the true false, multiple choice. Okay, um, so this uh, is, added to our H5P. And so if I wanted to edit this at all, if I want to change any of the, uh, um, the uh, questions that are asked in this little quiz set, uh, I can edit that here. I can add a question if I like. Um, and then once I'm done, I'm just gonna click update. Oh, that's not a good sign. Uh, WordPress is having a problem here. So I didn't make any changes, so I don't need to update that. Um, so I'll just go back to uh, have a look. So um, this sociological imagination, um, this is, oh, sorry, the one I just edited. Here we go, sociological perspective. Um, so this was edited 24 seconds ago. This is ID, H5P ID number one. So I will need that just uh, so that when I'm in my book, and I'm gonna go to make changes to the chapter. 
and I go down to the sociological perspective. Um, and let's say I want to add here an H5P activity. So I'm going to click on add H5P. And here's that one that was just modified 55 seconds ago. So I'm just going to insert that here. Click save. And I'll go and I'll preview that again. And now what you'll see is within the chapter. Sorry about my internet access here. I'll go back. Preview. Oh, I've broke the internet. Let me click preview uh, or click save again, just to make sure that this is okay. This is rather embarrassing. I'm sorry, just give me a second here. <laughs> Try removing that. Thanks, Caleb. Yeah, we've all had this moment, haven't we? So let me pull this up again. I'm not sure what's going on here, but this is not loading for me. Let me just go back and visit the copy of the book this way. Okay, so you see here, um, this is now on the Open Washington Network. Um, this is the, the cover of the book that I had copied over. And let me just go into reading so we get into what is sociology. Okay, I've done something to that chapter. I'm going to have to have a look at, at what it, I've done. Um, but uh, so I'm, I'm able now to get through uh, the navigation showing up for the rest of the chapters. So that's good. Um, so uh, when you embed uh, an H5P activity, I just wanted to show you, I think I've done that on this chapter. Um, yeah, so uh, once you do embed an H5P activity, into a book. This is what it'll uh, look like within your book for the students um, so that they can go through and they can answer the questions and they get immediate feedback. Um, this is the actual, uh, uh, what the actual uh, section quizzes look like for the students in the uh, uh, OpenStax book. So you can see here that this is a little bit better uh, interactive uh, material for the students to use. So let me just go back in here to uh, go over. I wanted to show you, I, I noticed in the, uh, the chat, one of the questions was uh, if you didn't want to bring in a whole text. So let's say that I had created this text myself and I had um, uh, wanted to include some material from a chapter or two of another book. So if I go back into the Pressbooks directory um, and I go down here, so Rothschild's Introduction to Sociology. Okay, I've seen, I heard this author present at a conference and he had an interesting perspective. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, pull a chapter from his book in here. So I'm just going to go up to the URL 
I'll go back into my network and I'm going to import. So when you click on import as an author, uh, you can import from several different file formats. You can import an EPUB, um, a Microsoft Word file. Now you will wanna um, set up your Word file in a uh, specific manner using uh, H1 headings uh, so that uh, uh, when you use uh, H1 headings, um, then Pressbooks knows what's designated as a chapter and what's uh, paragraph material. Um, same with open office documents. Um, if you have uh, a Pressbooks uh, XML file or a WordPress XML file, uh, you can import those as well into your uh, book or you can import from a web page or a Pressbooks web book. So uh, an HTML file or another URL. So I'm just gonna click, select the web page or Pressbooks web book. Uh, oh, sorry. Import from the URL, put the URL here. I'll begin the import. So this is gonna pull up for me a listing of all the chapters within this book. And so if I only wanted to select one or two of those chapters, uh, I can do that and just import that content rather than bring the whole book over. So if I go down to the uh, chapter seven on social stratification, okay. Um, I wanted this theoretical perspective global stratification and global inequity. So I do that, I go down and I import the selection. Um, I can also select uh, this tab here to show the imported content in web. Um, and I'll show you just a little bit uh, about what that does. So when I import the selection, it's gonna go through uh, our import routine. Um, and that doesn't take quite as long as a full clone of the book, but it does take a couple of minutes. So while we do that, I'm just gonna review the chat just to make sure. Uh, Nick, great question. Yes, when you do clone a book, it does bring over uh, appropriate uh, attribution for the original text. So um, when you do uh, clone a book as well, you are able to see um, a comparison of the clone book to your book. Um, and uh, but any you won't be notified of any changes to the original book. Okay, so uh, I cloned those three elements. So you can see here, um, theoretical perspectives on social stratification, global stratification and equality, and global inequality. These are all added to the end of the first part of my book. And from there, I can rearrange them as I like. So if I wanted to move them up, I can do that here, or I can click and drag a chapter down to chapter two, if you like, and rearrange just like that. Um, when I click that show in web, you can see here um, that you have a selection on, on what you want to display in your web book and what you want to display in exports. So if you didn't want to show some chapters in the export, or if you didn't want to show them necessarily in the web book until you made some changes to them, then you would just have that toggled off or toggled on. Update the chapter that way. And once you're happy with your book um, and you've got all the chapters as you like, then it'll be time to produce a specific exports for your book. Um, you might select the PDF for print. So if you have access to a print on demand uh, on campus, um, you can export PDF so that people can uh, get printed copies of the book or PDF for digital distribution. So that, that might be something that you post within your LMS. Um, uh, EPUB files, EPUB files are great for students to use on their mobile devices. Uh, and then we have a number of other uh, uh, Pressbooks um, 
file formats that we support exports for. And uh, the one thing that I will point out to with the Open Washington Network, once we set up uh, the integration with Canvas, uh, you can also export common cartridge with LTI links. So when you export the common cartridge with LTI links, you can go into Canvas, you can uh, import your book into Canvas, and then each chapter will show up as a module within Canvas. And the nice part about that is, number one, um, you can have a private book that maybe you're working on still, but you want to use with students in your class before you release it uh, publicly. Um, you can share a private book with students through uh, the LMS, and so they'll get access to that content. Um, and also, um, they don't have to click outside of the LMS. Uh, if you're sharing that book within uh, Canvas, students can stay and it'll all be available on their Canvas site. So let me just go into Canvas to show you what that looks like. Go into my Canvas course. So I'm logging in as an instructor here. And um, when I import um, a course into Canvas, you can see here, um, this is a different book uh, that I imported, but um, each chapter is available now as uh, a LTI link. So when I click on any chapter, or if any of your students click on a chapter, um, the LTI link creates uh, an account for them within Pressbooks so they can see the content um, of that book right within the LMS. Uh, navigation is just at the bottom of the screen within Canvas rather than within the web book. Hey, John, this is Ben from Spokane. I got a question for you. If if our subscription expires and we're unable to renew it, um, are those textbooks Sorry, this still is a available? Slow again. Yeah. Hi, Ben. Uh, looks like we got a little leg, but I'm asking if our subscription expires, would these LTI links still be available down the road? If, sorry, if the uh, the subscription to Open Washington expires? If our subscription with Pressbooks expires. Yeah, so, it, I mean, the LTI links will work just as long as the, uh, the network is running. Um, so if you, like, I don't believe, um, if you're asking around um, whether the, uh, the, and um, the, the limitless publishing that you have now for the year, if that subscription isn't carried on uh, in the next year, your, your account on Pressbooks isn't going to expire. Okay, will those books and those H5P artifacts still be available? Yes, they will, yeah. Yeah, as long as the network's available, those, those books and those artifacts will be available there. So uh, if your question is what happens if uh, the Open Washington Network um, uh, is shut down, then yeah, the, uh, um, those LTI links, uh, the, the book itself won't work. So the, the links are to the actual book itself. So, okay. yeah. Um, John, I think his question might be that um, Open Washington Network, I apologize for my voice again, everybody. If yeah, the no Open problem. Washington Network um, exists, it, it remains. However, um, college uh, couldn't renew their own um, contract for the upcoming year. And then what would happen? Yeah, so um, any book that's created uh, over the next year, Boyang, that'll stay on your network. Um, and it'll be available uh, to instructors to use as, as they choose going forward. That's excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm just reading. Okay, great. Thanks, Ben. Uh, I'm just reading uh, Nick's uh, in the chat. Um, do you, Nick, do you want to come off uh, mute just to? Yeah, yeah. So let's see. 
Um, I think you answered the attribution one, so I appreciate that. Um, I was kind of curious about like if an author um, uh, wants to basically be part of an authoring project, like I'm over in Spokane, if I see somebody um, maybe uh, at Seattle deciding that they're making this cool textbook, I want to be a part of it. Is there a way to contact that author through Pressbooks if I don't like if I want to add to their project instead of build my own? Oh, um, not unless the the author um, is sharing any information. You know, some authors will share in the preface uh, their contact information, but there isn't a way, um, especially if they're on another network. Um, you can um, uh, you can add people to projects on your network that are members of your network. So, uh, someone in Spokane and someone in Tacoma. Um, can work together on a book. And the only uh, caveat there is that they can't be in the same chapter making edits at the same time, but they can be in two separate chapters, which is more often what, uh, what people will do uh, when they co-author. Um, but they, they can't be in the same chapter making edits at the same time. And you will get a notification that someone, uh, the other author is in that chapter making changes. Oh, good. Okay, cool. And I was also going to ask, this maybe aligns with it slightly, when you were looking through that sociology text you were uh, importing, there oh, was yeah. under the author piece, it said author removed at, re or maybe it said text removed. I can't quite remember. Yeah, I think I know the original publisher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right there. Thank you. I was kind of curious what, what that might have been an artifact from. Um, yeah, so uh, when I'd done this uh, uh, demo previously, um, I had grabbed a chapter from a book that I had found on the Pressbooks directory. Um, I, I do know the book. It was uh, published out of uh, um, University of Minnesota's network. And um, that ought, so it was uh, a previously published book that uh, had been uh, uh, put out of print and the rights returned to that author. And the author allowed that material to be loaded into the University of Minnesota uh, press uh, network, but they just asked that their uh, their name be removed from it. So, um, so the uh, the authors and the editors of that book uh, chose to list that like this. Okay, gotcha. So that was something that was done manually by those authors. Not That's right. By press yeah. books itself. Gotcha. No, exactly. Yeah, so that uh, that that bring, brings up a good point. So, as an author, when you're uh, creating your book, um, I'll go into the book info here uh, because there's an awful lot of book info that you can uh, can carry on. So the uh, the title, the short title, subtitle, author, um, you can choose editors, translators, reviewers. Uh, you know, this this is all process that you can add names to, um, and uh, the original publisher, OpenStax, um, uh, and these are all things that this isn't uh, created by Pressbooks. Uh, it's actually just uh, the authors themselves who originally created that. And to your point before, this was all copied over as part of that cloning process, um, and even the the cover image. Um, you can fill out areas uh, around the subjects, uh, add additional subjects if you choose. Um, there's another feature that I think is great. Um, you can add your institutions. So uh, if you were publishing this book, you can select uh, the institutions or to your point, if you're publishing uh, across a couple of different institutions. Um, you can add those here so that uh, those will show up. Um, and as a field, again, in that meta metadata, um, and it'll show off the work that's been done on your college or university. Um, so here's that, uh, here's the link to the original source book, um, the copyright year, copyright holder, uh, any of the copyright notice um, and uh, nice uh, to put in uh, the, the uh, book, the short description. This is what will show up uh, in the description 
within the Pressbooks directory. So again, it's nice to, to emphasize that. So that's all, uh, and you can you can have uh, separate uh, setups within the chapters as well. If I went into uh, one of the chapters, you can set up down at the end of the chapter, um, in chapter metadata. So uh, if there's a chapter author, you can uh, uh, select the chapter author, uh, create a new contributor, uh, add a contributor uh, through this screen. Um, so if any of the, there's any differences to the, the metadata that you wanna uh, uh, show on a chapter level, you can do that here. Um, and then what's, uh, I'll, I'll show you also uh, the different themes. So the different themes uh, bring up different fonts and, and typefaces. Um, so there's 21 different themes that you can choose from. Um, and so Malala is the default theme right now, but you can make any changes. Uh, there's some details about each theme and you just click activate and that'll change the whole text and the whole uh, uh, font. So especially if you are pulling together uh, content from a couple of books, it's kind of nice. Uh, so within Pressbooks, it'll all have the same font. Uh, the same typeface and it will all be set up. Uh, if you are doing print or uh, EPUB, it'll all look the same between the chapters. Okay, uh, theme options. This is where you can make some changes uh, to the, uh, the different themes, uh, whether uh, it might be in the web option. So on the web book, uh, you want the web book wide, standard or narrow. Um, you can see even with a wide, um, there was still quite a bit of white space on either side of the book. So it's a nice presentation for students. And then if you have any interest in custom styles, uh, if you have that ability, I don't. Um, but this is where you can create your own custom web styles uh, and add them to a book. So if you know how to do any of this uh, HTML coding, um, this is where you would do that. I don't like to even go in here so much because I'm afraid I'm going to wreck something, but uh, that's where you would do that. Um, and uh, sorry, just checking the, uh, the chat. Um, and okay, so there's a question here. Okay, so um, if the H5P quizzes, uh, um, when you have those in a PDF, uh, uh, they're not something that students will be able to use, but it will describe um, the, that space in the book and it will give a link uh, for, to the web book so that students can do the H5P activities there. And the, the quizzes uh, can link uh, directly to uh, the Canvas gradebook. Um, to do that, you, you, uh, want, that's one of the add-ons for Open Washington. Um, so Open Washington has, uh, and, and Boyoung has got the LTI integration so that you can use the book within Canvas. Uh, but if you'd like to have the actual grade pass back between the H5P quizzes and uh, the Canvas grade book, uh, that is an additional add-on for your network. Um, that's something that um, that we can add at a uh, book by book level. So if you're using a book on one campus, um, we can add that uh, uh, Pressbooks results is, is the product. Um, we can add that to that book so that only the students that use the grade passback uh, is what you would be charged for. And if it is in a program, so that's a, sometimes a question that people have, um, if it's a program and you're using three different uh, uh, open educational resources on Pressbooks and you're using Pressbooks results with all of them, each student in the program would only count once. So it's just counting uh, the student's unique ID uh, to use uh, Pressbooks results, whether that's in one course or in multiple courses. Okay, um, just gonna see here, no other questions right now. Um, I probably should uh, just go back to um, 
the dashboard here and actually go into uh, the Open Washington uh, text. So to sign up for the network, I just want to emphasize here, uh, this is where you sign up. And when you click sign up, um, oh, I'm already signed in. So I'm just gonna sign out right now uh, and click sign up. Um, and this is, uh, uh, you just create a username and a username must be at least four characters. Uh, we just uh, use lowercase and numbers uh, for the usernames and uh, your uh, email address. So as long as you use in a Open Washington uh, uh, campus email address, uh, Bo Young's put all the email domains into the network. Uh, you'll be able to create your account and password um, and either register a book right now or so that's the creating a book project process or register a book later. So once you create an account, um, you can share that account information, not the, the login name and password, but you can share your username with those other authors that you're working with and they can add you to their project as long as they know your username. Um, occasionally. I'm sorry, it's boy. <laughs> um, occasionally, it does happen that um, the activation emails are quarantined um, and not delivered to you. 99% um, of the times, that's because of the um, filtering system set up by your IT department. So if that happens, then please do contact um, your college's IT department and ask them to approve those incoming emails from um, Pressbooks. So that usually resolve the issue 99% of the times. Thank you. Great, thank you, Boyan. Um, uh, Kristen has a, a question just about uh, what I was talking about with a unique identifying number. So um, uh, I, I believe you're talking about, again, uh, the canvas and using uh, the um, uh, press books with the LTI integration. So uh, what happens on the, on the canvas side is uh, so if if you are uh, sharing a book through the LMS, once a student clicks on that link, um, their Canvas information is passed over uh, to Pressbooks and uh, an account is created for them in Pressbooks. So um, it, the, the, we ask for minimal information and one is there's a unique campus identifier um, uh, that's used within Canvas and that's what the, uh, the account's created with. Um, so the student has access uh, to Pressbooks through the LMS. And um, yeah, that, that's where that uh, unique identifier comes in. And um, it, again, that's uh, how you can share a private book with a student uh, without making it public. So uh, to use it within the LMS. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back into the directory. Um, again, uh, I'm really looking forward to, let me just clear this off right now. Um, seeing uh, what's gonna come uh, from the great work that you're all gonna do on Pressbooks uh, over the next year and beyond. So you can see here uh, already a lot of the, uh, the, the titles that have been published. Uh, 36 are uh, right now available uh, within the directory from your network. Um, so I think that that's a, a great representation um, and I look forward to seeing how it grows. Are there any other questions 